In the previous part, we explored Azure AI content safety. And in this part, we are going to look into the expanded use case of Azure OpenAI services. Enjoy. Let's take a look at how we might use Azure OpenAI service or these large foundational models, these, these um, large language models or um, frontier models in our own solutions. What are some of the common ways we see these used? Now, these are by no means an exhaustive list and the most exciting stuff we're seeing is happening in the agent space or the agentic space uh, where these AIs are able to help us by taking actions for us. But let's take a look at some of these low, these places where organizations usually start. They look at these first because they're low hanging fruit. They're easy to address. They're known quantities and you can get great value from building. So the four areas are increased productivity, getting more out of helping everyone do more with less. It's always that constant demand. The second is how do we automate processes, things that we've never been able to automate before because it was too complex. The logic was just too complicated. Third is improving customer experience, being able to help our customer support people focus on the real job of talking and understanding the customer's problem rather than the, the challenge of looking up data or form filling. How do we make their customer experience really glow? And finally, building creative content. So how do we create new assets? I personally use this every day when I'm you know, creating new images for to represent something in a PowerPoint or whatever. So let's take a look at each of these in, in a little bit more detail. So increasing productivity, the big, big one, the big obvious one is developer efficiency. If you've used GitHub Copilot or any of the developer space, code generation, GitHub Copilot was actually the first of all of Microsoft Copilots. And it's a, if you're not familiar with GitHub, it is a, it is a uh, source control tool plus so much more, but it allows develop, it actually will help developers write code and be more efficient. I use it every day. I love it. It, it, it is just driving my efficiency uh, by massive amounts. The second is documented creation and, and analysis. I don't know if you've used copilot.microsoft.com or one of the other many tools. You go in and say, look, give me a, I want you to create a business plan for this. Uh, I want to, a place to start. Uh, business anal analytics. I often use something like Copilot drop a graph in the into an image of a graph into copilot and ask it to give me a, a an estimate of what might i be seeing in this graph so all of these are just about increasing productivity automating processes we see so many businesses having to do things like uh, take a uh, a document and extract information and then put it into a database. All of these consider automate processes. We see this being massively impacted by, uh, by generative AI. Fraud, security and threat detection. I do many demos where I will drop a, for example, a, a bank statement into uh, GPT and say, I've now got this transaction. I want you to tell me whether you, th how, what percentage chance is this transaction fraudulent? Um, being able to reason over large amounts of input data and policy and governance documents is something generative AI are very good at doing. Uh, it doesn't lose, lose focus that we might as humans. Um, so that becomes a hugely uh, powerful tool we have. Digital inspection and comparison. For example, taking an image and say, does this image, does this look like there's a fault here? I've seen that all open the door. Supply chain optimization, improving how we, we deliver value. If we look at the customer experience uh, side of things, this is where we really can help our customers get a, a, have a better experience by allowing our customers, customer support people to actually focus on the real job, which is listening, hearing uh, what the challenges are our customers are having, and then refining the knowledge that based on the customer feedback and putting that back into the system. So being able to uh, automatically complete forms as we're on, on the phone to a customer and helping that customer, being able to uh, use more robotic, uh, more chat interfaces with our customers so they can, for example, interact with us over things like WhatsApp and automatically have that very natural language experience. The whole intelligent uh, contact center, having our, our customer support staff having access to be able to 
find the data and the solutions they need when they need it quickly and and um, and accurately. And then things like speech analytics and translation with these models, new new models like Whisper and TTS One, where they're able to under look at the the input from um, from audio and actually extract information. And then finally, of course, the accessibility element, which allows us to build new customer experiences that really reflect the accessibility needs of, of every customer. That's massively, massively important and really, really useful. And I love that. I also love the fact that we also can use translation in any of these services so we can translate and interact with our customers in whatever language they need and makes them it, that it works for them that's something we've never we've we've not had as easy access to and then finally building creative content how do we generate all the assets that we often need day to day um, generating uh, images, we're also seeing things like video extraction. If we have a large amount of content, we might extract the what is going on in this video and store that in a database. Hyper-personalization is another really important area. We often send uh, marketing information out that is generalized to not me as a person. We are seeing on-demand podcasts being created. For example, when you log into your favorite app, it presents you a podcast summarizing personal information for you that you need, not necessarily your information about you, but information that is relevant to you in a way, delivered to you in a way that makes sense. And of course, all of this leads to more engaging and interesting ways of interacting with both our customers and our users. So those are the top four areas, but we are seeing so much more excitement in other areas that is beyond that, but we need to get these ones right before we go too far. So we've covered what is a foundational model, what is a large language model and a frontier model, how do they how do they basically work? And what is tokens? How what is self-attention and how are those how does this all of these concepts come together to allow you to produce generative AI solutions. We've looked at all of those things. And then we've looked at how do you, what's the easiest way to go and use a generative AI um, model in your application using the Azure OpenAI service. And then we've followed up with a little bit of a look at what are some of the use cases we are seeing used. But what do you do next? What do you need to know next? We talked a little bit about prompt engineering. Prompt engineering is a, a skill which is something that we all need to develop uh, because it allows us to get the most out of these models. And it is beyond being able to just say, explain to the model in the right way what we need. It is how do we provide the data, the grounding, the meta context that a model needs, along with the guardrails and examples and other techniques that allows us to really uh, get exactly what we want out of these models in a very predictable and controlled way. So we'll take a look at that in future. We'll also need to take a look at how do we do this again repeatedly in a way that where we can assure and ensure the safety and reliability, the responsible AI of these solutions uh, comes together. And then we'll also look, I think we need to look at how do you build some of the stuff really quickly and simply using some of the solution accelerators provided by Microsoft. We will also cover the important concept of retrieval augmented generation. And this will include a discussion on vectors and, and embeddings. These are, I'm sure you may have heard of the concept of retrieval augmented generation or RAG is a very important foundational concept in how we architect solutions and how we ground models in relevant knowledge. These are important things and topics we need to cover to really get the, to round out the discussion on building generative AI solutions.